have identified six strategies for longer lasting products. The first strategy you identified is creating attachment and trust. That's one of the most important strategies, but it's also one of the most difficult to design for because it's very, very hard to design a product of which you beforehand know that people will get attached to it or will like it or will love it because that's the essence of, of, of product attachment. Um, but if it works, then it can really mean that the user will keep, hold on to a product for a longer time. The second strategy you identified is design for durability. Yeah, uh, if you want a product to last long, one of, one of the things it actually needs to be able to do is withstand wear and tear. And you have to design it in such a way that it can actually last a long time. So that's also an important strategy. So you see a lot of products that are actually quite flimsy, but because people like them and take the trouble of keeping them safe, they actually survive over time. But products that are not from that category, but are used in everyday use, they need to be resilient by themselves to be able to survive for a long time. Thirdly, you identified designing for standardization and compatibility. Can you explain that? Yeah, design for standardization and compatibility has to do with whether you're able or not, if you use a product over a longer time, to, for example, either expand or replace, expand the system, expand the product or, or replace parts and design for standardization and compatibility in essence means designing a product in such a way that its parts do not only fit the product itself but also other products or the other way around that in your product you can use parts that are standardized or from other from other products and in that way you can repair uh, a product over a, a long a long time because spare parts will be uh, will be available and an example of that would be uh, the automotive industry where you can have windshield wipers that fit maybe 10 different models of, of cars and you can get that same windshield, windshield wiper for a car that's 10 years old but it will probably still fit on a car that's only one or two years old. So by making use of standardization and compatibility you can actually uh, exchange parts between different products and that, that could be between products from your own company or for your own business or out of your own product range but also between different brands. The fourth one is then almost self-explanatory, uh, designing for ease of maintenance and repair. Almost trivial ways of ensuring that a product lasts a longer time or a long time is taking care of it and making sure it's always in working condition, in tip-top condition. And one way of making sure or facilitating that people actually maintain their product is designing it in such a way that it's easy to maintain. And if it should break down for one reason or another, uh, it's also important that you design it in such a way that you can easily repair it instead of throwing it away because you can't get access to the part inside that is broken. The fifth one, we're almost there, is upgradability and adaptability. Designing for upgradability and adaptability has to do with the fact that not only uh, a product or uh, a product's context is changing but also the needs of a certain user and by being able to actually adapt the product to the changing needs of, of the user, you can also make sure that the user will keep it around for much longer. An example of that would be a KitchenAid mixer that you can use for mixing dough. Uh, but if you suddenly want to uh, eat more pasta, you can actually uh, put a pasta maker attachment on it and keep the same main unit and still uh, fulfilling a different need. Finally, design for this and reassembly. Design for dis and reassembly is also, it's, it's at the bottom of the list, but it doesn't mean it's the least important one. Uh, basically, however long a product lasts, it will come to an end at some point. So for that reason only, it's very important that you design it in such a way that you can separate the different parts. And if recycling is the only option, recycle them in a proper manner. But what's even more important and more relevant to uh, products with a longer lifetime is that being able to disassemble and reassemble them uh, facilitates remanufacturing, basically creating new products that contain parts that have been used before. So design for dis and reassembly, though last on the list, is really a very, very important one. That brings me to a question. This list, uh, it seems to be six random strategies, but I think there is a sort of logic to it. Is that right? Yeah, there is a certain logic to that list. If you look carefully from product attachment as the first one to dis and reassembly, uh, as the last one. You can actually see that uh, what we have called product integrity 
uh, along the scale is sort of uh, diminishing. If you have a product uh, that stays whole, as close as to it was produced in the first place, uh, then you can apply product attachment. But if you take it apart and you operate at a parts level, you actually uh, go a long way from the state in which the product was originally produced. So the product integrity is lower at that point, and all the different strategies along that scale have a diminishing level of product integrity. So more things change in the product in order to make it last longer.